Have you noticed reduced performance from your AIO cooler? Well, I'll take you through this video on how you can recondition your AIO cooler to perform like new again. Please remember to like and subscribe. At the time of recording, I've only got 17 subscribers, so if you like this kind of content, please remember to hit that subscribe button and like button and really help me out. So first of all, what you really want to do with the AIO cooler is clean it off and make sure that back plate is fairly clean. It doesn't need to be perfect, but get it as clean as you can. And I use some acetone to clean that off and get all the thermal paste off. Next thing you want to do is unscrew all the screws on the bottom of the AIO cooler. So then you can get the cooling plate off of the AIO. The next thing you want to do is grab a flat head screwdriver and you just want to gently pry off the metal plate. It can be stuck on there so just take your time and do it slowly. And also there's a rubber seal on the back which makes it a little bit harder to get off. You want to make sure you've got a container available. I've got a old paint can lid there which I'm filling up with the liquid from the AIO cooler. And you want to pick up the radiator so then the water flows out of the AIO cooler and into your pot. Now you notice that I haven't measured or weighed the AIO cooler and that's because I am using the pot to measure how much liquid comes out of there and also I've actually lost a lot of liquid as well so actually weighing the AIO cooler isn't going to make much of a difference because I am missing some liquid from the cooler itself. Also what you want to do is you want to remove the little rubber insert and that will allow more of the liquid to come out of the cooler itself. The next thing you want to do is you want to mark your container and this will give you an indication for how much liquid you need to put back into your cooler. In my case mine was actually really bad, you can see the liquid there actually has a lot of rust in it and also there was a lot of liquid loss from my cooler. But you want to put a mark if yours isn't too bad. The next thing is you want to use acetone on the plate on the, and that's the back side of the plate and just give it a general clean and you can just use an old toothbrush just to brush off the old fins and make sure there's no ingress or dirt in there and it will give you a better cooling performance if you do that job and give it a bit of a clean on the back side there. The next thing you want to do is you want to pick up your AIO cooler and you want to grab a pipette and you want to slowly start filling the AIO cooler with water and this has to be distilled water. I've actually made my own distilled water and filled it up in a water bottle and you slowly want to fill up the AIO cooler, picking it up every now and again so it flows through into the radiator. And the purpose of this is really to give it a general clean. Once You don't have to fully fill up the AIO cooler, you just need to fill it up to a certain amount. And then what you want to do is then you want to empty it and it just clears out any, any residual um, dirt or rust or anything inside the cooler so that then you can fill it up again with nice clean distilled water. You want to do this a couple of times and once you're done then you want to make sure you've got a connector available because what you need to do is you need to make sure the pump is running so that the cooler fills up properly. I actually had this gold connector and I cut it off and stripped the ends so I can connect it to a power source. Connect it to the end of the IO cooler and that's the power source for the pump and you need to use some kind of way to power it up. You can either use your motherboard but if your motherboard doesn't have a cooler on it, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, the other way is I've actually got this old power source that I used to have for my old radio control cars. And you can connect it onto that and it will power up the pump um, once it's all connected. Now, once you do have that connected and you can see I have a little bit of trouble getting it in there, it will the pump will switch on. And what you want to do is you want to slowly fill up the AO cooler with water. I've got the radiator hanging off the edge of the table so that it will fill up as the pump is running and you just want to slowly start doing this until it is full and your container is empty. Remember you had that fill line before and you should be able to fill it up to that fill line and you'll know that your pump is full. The other thing you may need to do is just give it a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a shake just to try and get all the liquid into the tubes and into the radiator just in case some of the areas of the AIO cooler isn't filled up with water. This will take a bit of time but once you're done and you feel like it is full and you've used up all your distilled water you can then disconnect the power source. Now once that's done what I highly recommend that you do because my AIO cooler is about 10 years old I would use a little bit of mineral oil on the old seal just to revitalize that nitrile seal again 
Now to remember that you don't want to use a huge amount of oil, you just want to use a tiny amount and actually any excess that you have here you want to wipe off with some tissue just to make sure that that oil doesn't get into the IO cooler or into the cooler in any way. Because the oil will cause problems, it will, it will start to uh, congeal and then it will start um, sticking to the bottom plate of the AIO cooler. Now once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to put it back together. Now, what I didn't do here and what you should do is put that rubber um, grommet back in and I didn't do that, so I had to take it back apart and put it in again. But make sure you put that in, put the plate back on and then you want to screw the back plate back on. What I recommend is you start off on the two sides of the corner so then you get a nice compression and you want to work your way in a, in a triangular pattern almost. So you work on each corners first and then you work your way to the middle. You can actually do that actually from the middle and work your way out which is actually a better method of doing it and it gives you a nice tight seal onto the back of the AO cooler. Now once you're done putting all the screws back in what you want to do is I've actually got the AO cooler powered on again through the power source and you want to check for any leaks or any water coming out of the cooler both from the end where it actually connects onto the CPU but also from the radiator and make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. If you do have leaks you may be in a situation where you may need to start replacing some of the hoses and if you are in that position you may actually think about replacing the cooler itself. So thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.